Good evening, good evening, family. Oh, another day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank God for you joining with us for our second session of Bible Enrichment with the title of Six Months Checkup. I pray that God is continuously blessing you and that he is keeping you. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for all your blessings. We thank you, God, for your excellent greatness. We thank you, God, for your loving kindness. God, you are an amazing God, and you're worthy to be praised. We thank you, Lord, for even sending your son Jesus to die that we may live. Now, Lord, open up our mind, our hearts, and our souls, God, that we will receive your word. We will study your word, and it will be studied. we will study it to show ourselves approved. We thank you, God, for just giving us breath and giving us life. Help us, Lord, to go through this, your study. Forgive us, Lord, for all of our sin and our wrongdoing. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Again, we're here uh, this evening for our second installment of Six Month Checkup. And I pray that last week was a blessing. I pray that last week was a restoration for you. I pray that last week was as enjoyable and as uplifting as it was for me to you. So we're going to our second, second installment. Uh, turn with me to Haggai chapter number one as we mentioned last week we wanted you to read Haggai uh, chapter one and get uh, kind of acclimated to it many people have not ever uh, read Haggai uh, some <laughs> some maybe didn't even know there was a book in there called Haggai but we're going to start talking about that I'm going to give you some background about Haggai and then we're going to get into the study Haggai chapter one let's go there uh, but I'm going to give you some background first, and then we're going to start reading. Haggai uh, was a prophet who, along with Zechariah, encouraged the return exiles to rebuild the temple. The temple was torn down. Uh, Haggai means festal, as I mentioned last week, which may indicate that the prophet was born during uh, one of three pilgrimage uh, feasts. Unleavened bread is number one. Uh, Pentecost or weeks is number two and then tabernacles that's actually uh, coming from Deuteronomy 16 16 Haggai may have witnessed the destruction of Solomon's temple uh, if so again like I said last week that means he was in ministry right at 70 years that's a, a long time to be in ministry um, uh, in 538 BC the conqueror of Babylon Cyrus king of Persia issued a decree allowing the Jews to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple led by Zerubbabel about 50,000 Jews journeyed home and began work on the temple about two years later in 536 uh, they completed the foundation and great rejoicing great rejoicing came because of what they have finished because of God giving them the power to do it their success aroused so much, watch this, that the Samaritans and other neighbors who feared the political and religious implications of a rebuilt temple in a thriving Jewish state. They had a problem with this temple being rebuilt. They therefore opposed the project vigorously and managed to halt work until 520 after Darius the king, the great king of Persia had passed which was 16 years, 16 years they had a break in, in, in rebuilding the temple. So 16 years later, Haggai and Zechariah were commissioned by the Lord to stir up the people to number one, not only rebuild the temple, but also to reorder the spiritual priorities. We're gonna talk about that just a little bit because uh, in this six month checkup, my question and our question should, I, should be to ourselves and everyone in the group is, are we allowing God to be the priority in our lives or are we allowing our own selfish ambition to be the priority? What, what are we what are we doing to show God that God is first and foremost in our life? Are, are we having a problem with saying you God are are it. You're 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 the one that's in charge, and I'm and we're gonna follow you 
for the rest of our lives? Do we, do we do that now? Or are we allowing our own personal beliefs, our own personal thoughts, our own personal uh, issues? Are we allowing that to separate us from God? What, what are we doing that's giving us the mindset that we can't move forward? What, what are we doing? Darius was interested in the religious in the religions of his empire and Haggai and Zechariah began to preach in his second year. The Jews were more to blame for their inactivity than their opponents and Haggai tried to arouse them from their uh, laziness, if you will. Haggai's messages are among the most carefully and precise dated, precisely dated in the entire Old Testament. They were given during a four month period in 526, 520 BC the second year of King Darius. The first message was delivered on the first day of the sixth month in August 20, which is preferably August 29th. The last on the 24th day of the ninth month or December 18th. So Haggai is seemingly the shortest book. It only has two chapters, but in this first chapter is setting the foundation is showing the people is letting the people know, listen, you have some work to do. We have some things that we need to really get together because we are acting out of character. Just because we've had some hiccups and some hangups, that does not give us the responsibility to put God on the back burner, put God on the bookshelf, allow God to be last in our lives rather than first in our lives. So because of the, the discouragement of the neighbors, the people had wrongly concluded that it was not yet time to rebuild the temple. The Lord had to remind them through the prophet that it was not right for them to live in their own beautiful homes and have the temple be in ruins. We're going we're to talk about that in just a few minutes as well. The Lord told them, listen, consider carefully the consequences of your indifference. Amen, somebody. So, so if we're looking at doing work for God, and we're looking at this first six months of the year. Are we doing what we need to do? Or have we allowed this pandemic to take us away from God rather than bringing us closer to God? The six month checkup, I want you to really evaluate yourself. Look at yourself and say, listen, am I doing more or am I doing less? I know we have to stay socially distant. I know we can't go into the worship center, but check this out. Are you still praying? Are you still fasting? Are you still uh, uh, reading your word? Are you still studying your word? Or have you become lax and backed up from it? See, that's part of the problem because the reason, this is my, 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 my belief now, the reason why we are going through the things we're going through is because God allowed them because, watch this, we have taken our focus off of him. Help me somebody. We are, we are so... Uh, in tune to what we want rather than what God wants. And God had to get our attention. God had to open up our eyes. God had to put us on notice to let us know that this is not about you. This is about him. This is not about me. This is about him. This is not about our church. It's about him. This is not about how, who has the best choir, who has the best preacher, who prays the best, who reads the scripture the best, who's the one that has the fluency of speech. It's not about those things. It's about us being able to say, for God I live and for God I die. Do, do you have the mindset to say, Lord, listen, I know that I have been out of sorts for a while and now I want, to, I want you to forgive me. I repent from my sins. And if you do that, then God will turn around and start doing what he needs to do on his end. But our responsibility, my brothers and sisters, is to make sure that we have not put God on the shelf. These first six months has, has been a rigorous six months. These first six months have been something that could have torn our families apart, torn our, our finances apart, torn our, our, our future apart. It can do all those three things. But as long as we keep doing what God says to do, then we're going to be fine. God says he's going to take care of us in spite of the things we're dealing with. He's going to take care of us in spite of the, 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 the opposition that may come against us. 
So understanding this first in this six month checkup, let's let's read Haggai chapter one since we got we got it right here. Haggai chapter one, and um, I'm gonna read it out of the um, the NIV. I want you to get it on this way, and then I'm gonna go actually back later, and I'm gonna read a little bit from the Message Bible because uh, I, I love the Message Bible. It gives us another outlet another another way of looking at things it's an easier read for some uh for most of us matter of fact and that's that's one book that i love to read so haggai chapter number one let's read it together in the second year of king darius on the first day of the sixth month the word of the lord came through the prophet haggai to zerubbabel son of shittiel governor of judah and to joshua son of josodak josadak the high priest excuse me this is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. It is, it is a time for you yourselves to be living. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses? Those are the good houses. While the, this house remains a ruin. So let, let, let me stop right there. Haggai is telling the people what God is saying and Haggai is letting them know that God is a little bit disturbed because you are living on the high horse, but yet you want the church to fall apart. You, you're, you're living in your paneled houses. These were the houses that were built for those that, 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 that had a little money. They, they were able to take care of the houses and history tells us that the panel houses were, I guess you could say similar to uh, houses with um, pan, uh, um, vinyl siding on it, if you will. They were very good built houses. So in this first six month checkup, in this six month checkup, my question to you is, are we allowing what God has blessed us with to overtake or be more important than where we worship? Y'all didn't catch it. Are we allowing the worship center to go down, to look bad, even without the pandemic? Are we allowing the worship center to, to, to go to ruins? Are we, are we not taking care of the church building? Even though the church is in us, are we not taking care of the place where God is allowing us to come to gather together to worship him in spirit and in truth? Are we allowing that place to go down now many of you probably are saying well that's not my job where well, actually it is it is it's part of all of our jobs to make sure that 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 the the place of worship is still looking good even if, if your house is looking good your the place of worship should be looking good so 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 are we and i say this often to ivor hill when you see a piece of paper on the ground do you pick up the piece of paper do you treat this place, this house of worship that God has allowed us to come and worship in? Do we treat it better or worse than our own homes? OK, so for this first six month checkup, the first thing we need to do is watch this. Forget about making excuses. <laughs> we have to stop making excuses for not doing the work of God because of our selfish thinking and ways. We have to stop. We got to forget about making excuses. The reason for their lowliness was because they remove their love for God and his work and looked at self. <laughs> they, they were acting as hypocrites and have now forgotten their priority. They, they, they were living good because of God's blessings to them but didn't care about what God wanted them to do. In this six month checkup, have we successfully, successfully made excuses for not following the mandates of God? Yes, I said it correctly. In this six month checkup, have we successfully made excuses for not following the mandates of God? Are we there and just living life, letting God bless us, but we're not being a blessing to his church, to his building, to his, to, to, to his people. Are we, are we really overlooking those that may not have the same type clothes that you have on? Are we overlooking those and having a problem with people because they may not have the same high level of education that you have? 
do you think that you're the smartest one in the bunch all the time? Do you, is it to the point where you can't, nobody can tell you anything? Are we making excuses for not doing the work of the Lord? Because watch this. Somebody has told us that we don't know what, our do what we're doing. But if God has blessed us and put something in us to, to, to do his work, then our responsibility, my brothers and sisters, is to do exactly that. Let's read verse three and four again. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. It is a time for you yourselves to be living. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses? Why the house remains a ruin? That's a good question. Are, are we are we taking care of our responsibilities? Let, I, I'm going to go there because some people are going to get to the point where they're going to get upset with me because I say this. But are we still paying tithes and offering? Come on. Are we keeping the grounds clean? I know we have people that do the, the grounds cleaning here, but let's just say you walk and you go through the parking lot. And you go to the cemetery or you go wherever it is here on the parking lot and you see something that's out of place. Are we picking it up? Are we fixing it? Are we fixing any issues that may arise? We, we have days where we come out here to clean. And sometimes it ain't but two or three that come. That's not fair to God's house. So we have to get to a place where we say, I'm not going to make any more excuses about not being in place for God because God has always been there for me. Help me somebody. Let me, let me give you some more examples about people that made excuses. Genesis chapter three, amen, somebody. Genesis chapter number three, verses 12 and 13. Turn with me there real quickly. Genesis chapter number three, verses 12 and 13. Amen. Genesis chapter number three, verses 12 and 13 says, this man said, the woman whom you gave to me to be with me, she gave me from the tree and I ate. Come on here with your excuses. Then the Lord said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Okay, so Adam and Eve made excuses. Made excuses by, 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 by knowing what was told to them, especially Eve, knowing what was told to her, but yet did it anyhow. Yeah, yeah, because because the serpent deceived her. But at the same time, Adam is saying the woman that you gave me deceived me. So so if if God had gave Eve. The instructions of not touching that tree. Because they were together, I'm pretty sure and I'm just speculating here that Eve did tell Adam. Because of the conversation. See, when God talks to you, that's a powerful thing. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm just speculating again. I'm pretty sure there was a discussion about it. And even if there wasn't, Eve, when seeing this, should not have told him to eat, take, take the uh, fruit from the tree. So, so there, there's a communication blockage there. In this six-month checkup, are we making excuses for things that we shouldn't make excuses for? Turn with me to Exodus chapter 3, verse 11. And then we're going to jaywalk right over to Exodus chapter four. So Exodus chapter three, verse 11. We've got to stop making excuses. Got to stop making excuses. Exodus chapter three, verse 11. If you're in Matthew, you went too far. Ex Genesis, Exodus chapter number three, verse 11 says, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt? Listen, 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 listen. Moses had a problem. And the problem was he was not able to speak real good. And uh, in this point right here, God told Moses, listen, go tell Pharaoh and let my people go. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting them out of there. They need to get out of where they are. They're bound, they're, they're bound down. They're in bondage. And I'm sending you, Moses, because that's what I, who I want to do it. And Moses had gotten to a place where he said, who, who? But Moses said to God, who am I? And God had to turn around and say, you're the one I chose. What has God chose you to do that you don't do because you're worried about what people are going to say? What have God told you to do that you're that you make an excuse saying that the reason why I can't do it is because I'm too old now? Come on here, y'all. What excuse have you made to the point where you say, listen, God, I can't do it because I don't have the finances to do it. Y'all excuse me about that. 
excuse me, God, I don't, I don't think I can do it because I'm too young to do it. Don't let folk, uh, block you from a blessing just because of your age, just because of your side, the side of the track you came from. Don't, don't let folk block you from your blessing just because things don't look the way they want it to do, but you, but God has given you your instruction. This is your opportunity to listen to the word of God and listen to God when he's talking to you and say, listen, Lord, I'm going to do what you told me to do because you told me to do it. Who am I? Moses said, I, who, I'm only, I'm only a boy from Jacksonville, North Carolina country boy you called me <laughs> hey you called me to do that I, I don't think i'm worthy god and god says i called you because i see it in you and i'm telling you that this 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 evening god has called you to do some things because he sees that you can do it he will not put more on you than you can bear and the anointing that comes from god is priceless you can't buy that God gives it to you because he wants you to have it. Exodus chapter four, verse 10. Let's go there real quick. Exodus chapter number four, verse 10. Then Moses said to the Lord, please, Lord, I have never been eloquent. Neither recently nor in times past, nor since you have spoken to your servant, for I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. I, I have a problem with my speech. I'm not one that can turn folks attention to me because of what I say. See, we have to stop making excuses because of uh, the thorns that we may have in our flesh. We have to stop making excuses because of what God, ha how God has made us different from our neighbor. Y'all don't understand that when you start making excuses, actually you're talking yourself out of the blessing. Come on here, y'all. When you start making excuses, you are actually talking yourself out of a blessing because in the end of it all, God has something for you that he's not going to give to your neighbor. God has something for you that he's not going to give to your friend. God has something for you that he's not going to give to anybody else because he gave you the mission to do his work. Here's what Jesus said. Jesus said something about excuses in John chapter 15, verse 22. I'm going to put it on the screen. If I had not come and spoke to them, they would not have sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Obe disobedience is sin. And if God gives you some walking papers, God gives you some instruction to do something, that means God wants you to do it. Help me somebody. And just because you have opposition that tells you God, they don't believe God said that to you, that does not qualify them to tell you that you can't do it. If God has put a blessing into your life and it's for you, then you better do what God says, because if you don't, you're sinning. It's disobedience. And we have to get to a place where we're going to do what God says, even if everybody turns away from you. If everybody in your family says you ain't you, you ain't heard from God and God has specifically told you to do that, then it's your responsibility to keep pushing. Don't allow opposition to get you away from uh, what God called you to do, because all that is an, is, is an excuse. Stop making excuses. Stop allowing uh, the enemy to come into your mind, your heart and your soul to make you feel as if you're not qualified. If God gave it to you, that's all you need. If God told you to do it, that's all you need. If God blessed you with, the, with that blessing to do it, that's all you need. And when it comes to the place where God is saying, I'm going to bless you in spite of what people have given you, then understand God's got your back. Amen, somebody. So stop making excuses in this six month checkup. Make sure you're not making excuses for not doing what God called you to do. The people, these Jewish people were, 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 were making excuses. I, I can't, we, no, we have had opposition, so we don't want to go build the temple. We don't want to do it. I know God, you, God told Haggai to tell us to do it, but listen, I don't think it's time. The time is not right. But if God tells you to move, it's always the right time. If God tells you to go to school, it's always the right time. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. If God tells you to, 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 to answer the call of being a minister, you, you, it's your responsibility to do it because God is the one that called you. Don't let mama, granddaddy, grandma, and your own pastor be the one to call you. 
No, let God be the one and he'll give you the right time. He'll put it in your spirit because you won't be able to hush. You won't be able to sit down and be quiet about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You won't be able to just sit around and let people always talk to you about it. You'll be able to have to tell them about what God is doing in your life. I don't know if I have any witnesses out there that can truly say that when you hear the voice of God, that you have to move. And if you don't move when he tells you to move, watch this. He's going to give you, he's, he's going to make you feel uncomfortable where you are. You won't be able to sleep at night. You'll have restless nights because God is always waking you up at two, three, four in the morning, saying stuff to you that you, that you, that you just, you, you having to write it all down because he's giving you that much information. God will make you restless, uncomfortable. If God tells you to move out of something, he's going to make it uncomfortable because he wants you to move. So, so, so in the six month checkup, babies, let's, let's not, let's forget about making excuses. That's the first thing that's between verses one and four, one through four, stop making excuses for not doing God's work. Amen. Secondly, this is one we're going to close on for tonight. <laughs> don't limit God. Number two, don't limit God for your own selfish dealings. Don't make excuses first and don't limit God for your own selfish dealings. Verses five and six. Let's 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 check them out. Verse five in the NIV of Haggai chapter one, it says, now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Here it is. Give careful thoughts to your own ways. <laughs> Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but harvest little. Mm -hmm. You eat, but never have enough. <laughs> you drink, but, n but never have you feel. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in them. My God from high. Don't limit God for your own selfish dealings. They have become so selfish that they didn't realize that God has actually or essentially put a hole in their pockets. Everything that they, they think they got on their own, they received on their own. God is not making it enough for them. Their selfish lack of concern for God's house had only caused them more hardship. I'm slowing down because I want y'all to get this. This six month checkup, don't limit God for your own selfish dealings. Don't, don't, don't allow what you want to do to come before what God wants you to do. Don't, don't, don't let your sitting on the mountain. Don't sit on the mountain and forget that you can still go back down in the valley. <laughs> don't don't get to a place where you're 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 more concerned about what you can get out of God rather than what you can give to God. Y'all ain't helping me. No, God don't need it. I got that. But are you more concerned about what you can get from God? rather than what you can give to the house of God. Let me put it that way. Matthew chapter six, verse 25 through 33. Come on, let's go. Let's go there real quickly. I'm gonna put it on the screen, but I want y'all to read with me. Matthew chapter six, verse 25 through 33. This is the, the, the section about where, 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 where Jesus is telling them not to worry. You, 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 you don't have to worry because God made you specifically for this time. And he wants you to understand that you don't have to worry about nothing. The birds don't, don't worry. They're still singing. They're still praising God for what they have. But are, why are we worrying? Okay. J uh, sorry. Matthew chapter number six, verse 25 to 33. Okay. We're back here. Don't, do not limit God for your own selfish dealings. The NIV says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food? And the body more than clothes. <laughs> Look at the birds of the air. 
They do not sow or reap or store away, store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. <laughs> and we're and we we are the ones he created. Are you not much more valuable than they? Aren't you more valuable to God than they are? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Help me somebody. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? <laughs> they do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is where today, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. Will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. Here's where I wanted y'all to get it. But seek thee first the kingdom and his righteousness. Mm hmm and all these things will be given to you as well. Seek first the kingdom. Therefore, verse 34, therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. We, we got to get to a place where we don't limit God for our selfish dealing. We got to get to a place where we understand right there in verse 33, where it says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Let's not put God to the side because we want a little extra money. Y'all ain't helping me. Don't, 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 don't say, listen, Lord, I got, I got, mm -mm. I, I can't, I can't go to Bible. Matter of fact, you don't even have to go anywhere. You can sit in front of a computer now. And listen to what your Bible study teacher is saying. You can sit right there behind a computer, your device, your laptop or whatever and see worship. But now we have gotten to a place that even just because that just because we can't get into the church, we don't want to have anything to do with church. No, baby, we got to get to a place where it says, seek the first his kingdom and his righteousness. That means we put God first. And when we put God first, watch this, and all these things will be given to you as well. Mm -hmm. If you put God first, my sisters and brothers, then that means he will respond by giving you everything else that you need. And watch this, some of what you want. That should be good news for somebody out there because you've been struggling trying to figure out how you're going to do it yourself. And all I'm telling you on today is stop putting your selfish ambitions before God. Let God be the one that supplies your need. Let God be the one that gives you what it is you desire. Let God be the one that, that, that turns things around in your life to a point where you say, listen, Lord, I thank you. Because whatever you're doing in this season, please don't leave me out. And God's not going to leave you out because you have been faithful over what he's given you. Let me give you scripture. You've been faithful over a few things and he's going to make you ruler over many. Seek thee first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things. All the things that you are concerned about, God going to bless you with them. All the things that you're you you have you have you have gotten to a place where you're struggling trying to keep going. God says, I'm going to supply it for you. But all you have to do is don't limit God for your own selfish dealings. That means even if nobody else is doing the work, it's your responsibility to still do the work. If nobody else is showing up, you just do what God called you to do. If nobody else is responding how God says to respond, then you just keep doing the work and don't be concerned about what other folk are doing. That's not your responsibility. That's not your circle of concern. You do what God says. Don't limit God for your own selfish dealings. Watch this and we're going to close on this. Don't limit God just because you have opposition. Nope. Don't limit God just because 
things are not going the way you want them to go. Don't limit God. Don't turn away from God because uh, God hasn't showed up in your life yet. Just because he has not showed up don't mean he is not going to show up. That just means he has some some building up of you to do. He has some things that he wants you to get a hold of and learn how to do better because he wants to bless you to the point where it, it, it doesn't look hypocritical. He wants you to be blessed even in your mess. So in the six month checkup, don't make excuses. Let, let's do what God says. Don't, 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 don't make excuses just because it, people are, are looking at you crazy and funny. That does not mean that you ought to stop doing what you're doing. Just, just because it doesn't, people in the, in, in, in the house of worship tell you, no, you do what God say, but understand now, if you don't, there's consequences. Mm -hmm. If, if, if you don't live up to the level that God wants you to live up to, then he will strip you and bring you down. God knows how to do that. God knows how to do that. Lord, he does. God knows how to do that. He, he, he can, he can, he can, uh, show you a blessing. And just because you're not doing what you need to do, he'll take it back. One, three, five, one, two, five. I'm sorry. There was one that had five talents, one that had two talents, one that had one talent. The one that had five talents did what he was supposed to do, did what God told him to do. And it, God doubled his. The one that had two talents did what God told him to do. And he doubled his. The one that had the one talent put his in the dirt. He had his. How, 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 many, <laughs> how many talents do you have that you're hiding? Because you're making excuses. They don't want to hear me. It doesn't matter what people want to hear. It's, it's all about what God has told you to do. Don't make excuses. Don't make excuses because if you make excuses and and, and dig and put your, your, your talent in a hole, God's going to take it from you and give it to somebody else. If you have a voice, but yet you're still sitting in the, in the congregation, even when we get back in church, Y'all heard me. If, 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 if you don't mind dancing, praise dancing for God, but yet you're still sitting down and not, and not letting anybody see your talent, see what God has blessed you with, God will give it to somebody else. Matter of fact, many a times God will give it to the next generation under you. He, he, he'll do that because he wants to show you that you could have did the same thing, but yet you made excuses. Don't make excuses on what God has called you to do. And when you understand that you, it's not good for you to make excuses, then don't put God on the back burner. Make sure you're doing what you need to do for God, because when you do what God says, then he'll in turn bless you. You, 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 you will receive some things that you didn't know that you even had. You were qualified for. I done said that one time before you. God will open up some windows and open up some doors. That will shut in your face. And it usually happens, watch this, because you're disobedient. We're doing the exact opposite of what God has said. Now, the way to fix it, watch this, is just to go to God and say, Lord, listen, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Repent. Repent. We've all done wrong. But here's the thing. Have you, were you able to ask God for forgiveness, get up, dust yourself off, and keep it moving? People are always going to have something to say. They're always going to try to find some fault in what you're doing. But watch this. When God is before is for you, he's more than the whole world against you. When God before you, God, if God is with you, you don't have to worry about what folk going to say. If God is with you, you don't have to be concerned about all, all the mischievous things people do. If God is for you, don't even sweat the small stuff. You keep doing what God says. You keep living for God and watch God bless you. I pray that everyone has been, is doing well. I pray that everyone has received that word from, from God for you today. Uh, continuously read Haggai. We're going to try to uh, finish it, the first chapter, um, next week. So, again, God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. That is my prayer. Listen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my email address on screen. If you are desiring prayer, special prayer, Email, send me an email, 
throughout the week. If you have my cell phone, send me a text or call me or whatever um, so that I can begin uh, really. I pray every day for y'all, but I, I, I some people need special things in their life. You can pray for yourself, true, um, but I don't mind doing it. So if there's special prayer requests that you need from me, by all means, email me, text me, and I'll make sure that I put it uh, on my heart, put it on the altar um, for God to take care of it, to do what it is he, is he 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 can do and he can do alone. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, on the, this evening for being such a good God, or such a grateful God, such a loving God that you that you take care of us in spite of us. You keep on blessing. You keep on keeping. You keep on moving. You keep on just looking out for God, us, God. And we just thank you on this evening. Father, we ask you to touch our families. If there's some that are not saved in our families, touch their heart, God, and allow them to come running saying, what must I do to be saved? They need you, God, in their lives. So we give them to you. Touch our children. Touch our parents. Touch our family, God. Touch our jobs, God. Touch our churches, Lord. Touch our pastors and our leaders. And just, Lord, just bless our community. Bless our cities, our states, and bless our country, God. We need you. We need you. Touch this pandemic, God. And, and remind, keep reminding us that we have work to do. And then when we do our part, you're going to come back and do your part. Because your word says it. Your, your word says it. We thank you, God, on this evening of being so good. Forgive us, Lord, for all of our sin and our own doing. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. That is my prayer. Listen, y'all have a bang up rest of your evening. Let God continuously bless you and keep you. I love you guys. And I ask you to have a blessed day. God bless.